Hello, guys. Um, I'm happy to announce our next speaker, uh, Pavlo Repalon. Uh, Pavlo is founder of H Cloud Technologies, and uh, today it will be a really interesting topic um, about H computing. And um, just to remind you, it's very important during that presentation that we have uh, two options to communicate with speaker. The first one is a small, easy form under presentation where you could easily write something. Um, um, and maybe it will be some questions during presentation. And uh, after um, Pablo will finish uh, the main part, you could uh, join uh, Zoom room for track number three to talk directly, to discuss uh, all questions in any language. So, Pablo, let's start. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me to this conference. I'm happy to be here. Uh, hello, everybody behind the screens, behind the camera, and uh, so uh, let's let's begin. Uh, so, what I will tell you today, uh, I will tell you about the edge computing. Since there is not too much uh, information regarding this approach, regarding this paradigm. Uh, in Ukraine and in, in, in our network, uh, I decided to create some lightweight content, uh, not falling too much into detail, so there will be no console experience, no logs on the screens, etc. So it will be kind of essence of our uh, experience uh, during last half of the year while we are doing a couple of projects in this area. Uh, before we begin, uh, just quick question. Uh, what do you think? Uh, put your answers into comments, and uh, I will I will know. Uh, how many compute cores has this tiny board? Uh, a couple of hints. I'm counting uh, CPU and plus GPU, and uh, this board are two years old. So it's it's version uh, it's version from 2018. So drop me the, the, the figures to, to comments and uh, let's see how, what do you think? So it's kind of two, two, two three plastic cards uh, board. So uh, while you're answering, a uh, brief, brief introduction of, of, of what we are talking. So what is actually edge computing? Uh, why it's and how it's to be, to be used in business, so actually how to how business is making money out of it, uh, why it's going to be something big uh, next five to ten years, uh, what it means practically for DevOps teams, for, for DevOps mates uh, and, uh, and the guys around, like QA's developers, uh, what was the real tough practical challenges, and a few words about the vision of the future, and then, of course, we'll be happy to, to answer your questions. So, do you have any answers? No? Okay, okay, I will, I will let you know at the end uh, regarding, regarding this. So, let's begin. So, what is actually uh, edge computing? Uh, this is uh, something, oh, I guess... Uh, Oh no! Oh no! Somebody, somebody is already trying to, to answer some huge figures. Uh, no, 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 not not yet. Probably in ten years it could be like that. Uh, so okay, le then let me okay. So it's uh, actually here we have uh, it's less than hundred bucks, and so we have uh, six CPU ARM cores, uh, not Intel, not Intel, and uh, six uh, so six CPUs and four GPU Mali. So it's kind of tiny board. Uh, what can uh, be a part of real cloud with handling uh, Docker containers and all the all the related stuff? So things are changing. 15 years ago, I would I would have it as as a normal REC server. So back into the presentation. Uh, so what is edge computing? So the the main aspects. Uh, it's uh, resource virtualization. So it's where we already start uh, using uh, virtual machines, uh, Docker containers, any other type of containers. There is not only Docker, as you know. 
uh, this uh, proce uh, processing data processing close to the data origin, uh, so where we are processing data right at their origin and not uh, sending a gigabit of traffic to, to, the, to the main cloud. And uh, it's about low latency applications, so it's something which is roughly, let's say, less than 20 milliseconds uh, interaction delay. And it's uh, distributed computing resources, so it's uh, hundreds of thousand devices across, so it's closer to IoT, but it's not actually IoT, and uh, we are assuming that some of these uh, things could operate autonomously, so it uh, do not require uh, uh, continuous uh, connectivity to the main cloud. So let's take a look on detail. So this is typical uh, device edge uh, approach. Uh, so what we can see here, so it's a piece of hardware, like I've showed before, uh, where we, we can run some tiny virtual machines, uh, set of containers, uh, group of containers, uh, some bare metal applications, and uh, over some uh, hypervisor, so it could be Xen, it could be KVM, uh, and uh, then we are interacting with the sensors, so with the controls, so it could be whatever you could imagine, so it could be uh, robots, it could be some pumps, uh, sensors, cameras, whatever. And uh, yeah, so and let's let's take a look closer. Uh, this the same tiny board, so this is Pine uh, Pineapple uh, Rock Pro 64. Uh, and uh, the difference with traditional clouds and traditional DevOps approach is that uh, we are going to virtualize and to share the resources between different applications, not only about the base resources like CPU, GPU, RAM, network, uh, disk volumes, but also the periphery. So generic purpose uh, I.O., so this, uh, these tiny, tiny pins uh, on the right side, uh, some uh, periphery like USB, audio, video connectors, uh, industrial buses, so there are a lot of industrial periphery on these kind of boards, and uh, some specific sensor sports like infrared, so whatever you could imagine could be on this kind of, uh, this kind of periphery, uh, could be and should be managed uh, in order to be accessible, accessed by different uh, applications running over these platforms. Oop, just a second, looks like we have a bit of issue. Oop. Uh, yeah, sorry. So, uh, then uh, let's take a look at some examples where to use it in business. So the, the, the Traditionally, there are a number of uh, industry industries uh, uh, nominated for for using these solutions, and uh, these industries are already utilizing this quite a lot. So it's the telecommunications, telecom edge, manufacturing, automotive, which is sort of manufacturing, some uh, mining, oil, gas. Uh, energy, so very soon I expect that our energy grids will be managed by, by this approach. Especially agriculture, what I will take a look, uh, to take more, more and more talks about this later, and even space tech, which is kind of hype right now. Uh, generally, uh, this industry is supposed to be grow significantly, so this is some, uh, from, from some figures from Gartner, uh, so if, if right now we have something like 10% process it on the edge, uh, in 2025 we are expecting 75%, so it will be a lot of work to do in this area. Uh, so, uh, I decided to, to, to create three kind of fantastic use cases, uh, I mean, so there is not, not a real business behind, not real use cases, I'm just, just wondering how it could be, and just to get you a bit closer examples of uh, what's, what's the appliance actually. Uh, so, as my, um, some of you know that in Ukraine there just started uh, speed monitoring on the, uh, on, on the roads, on the highways, uh, it was disabled for, 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 for a few years uh, before, and uh, I've uh, decided to, to think how I would create this, this type of system if, uh, to make it more sustainable for society. Uh, so here we have camera, here we have, uh, in the center we have uh, edge board, 
uh, edge computing, edge, edge server, and uh, there are a number of easy applications, so we can uh, run containers uh, which will focus on plate detection, so the numbers. Uh, then some insurance company can utilize this part uh, in order to detect some incidents and get the reports. Uh, some advertising company can uh, count uh, and do some very, very personalized advertisement for, for your uh, machine make, model, color, etc. later on, or just simply collect some statistics. And there is on also, um, in yellow, there is some management uh, containers uh, who are taking care about the power of, of, uh, of these, some redundancy applications, uh, application containers management in general, so something what uh, other guys, uh, green and blue, should not be able to, to access, and that's, that's not their deal. And uh, then this, uh, this box could be connected to the number of clouds, and it could be uh, ad management in, in their um, Azure application, it could be insurance management at AWS, it could be our uh, platform uh, management in our own private uh, DC using Kubernetes, whatever. But the main thing is that uh, to the main cloud we are not uh, providing a data stream, so we are not uh, generating gig bits of, of traffic. We are just uh, sending their insights or, or some control data or or some kind of small tiny pieces of video where it uh, really needs to be to be shared. Some, I don't know, road incident happens and we are just extracting this video and sending this uh, back to the interested party. So we don't need to, to send all this uh, data which is 90% useless to the to the main cloud so you can we can process it on the edge so that's that's the approach uh, second case it's a factory uh, so call it economy 4.0 uh, so here we, we can have a uh, data center of the factory, uh, which is uh, not about device edge, but closer to the telecom edge. On this, uh, on the database, um, sorry, on the data center uh, of this uh, factory, we can run a private uh, mobile network. Uh, the core site, so the packet core of a private mobile network across this factory could be run it locally. So you are no, no more dependent on other uh, mobile operators you are uh, not dependent on the internet connectivity so you you can you can fly it autonomously uh, a private mobile network is a, another sort of uh, edge computing approach and it's slightly better than uh, conditional wi-fi uh, because okay at least at the stage of 5g it will be much more uh, robust for, for for industrial usage much more secure um, so it's it's really better and then uh, all these robots, all these warehouse machines, etc., they they could be software uh, software control it, and a lot of robots are already software control it. And then the uh, phrasing or approach infrastructure as a code uh, becoming more and more real. So it's a real infrastructure, real robot, real product lines, uh, which, uh, which is defined as a code line store it uh, at the local local data center and if you need to adjust some i don't know soldering machine to to tune it up uh, because your quality control saying that you are soldering in the wrong way uh, it's another kind of uh, it could be git push git commit uh, to to adjust this and then you can easily detect that okay i i, I need to to propagate this uh, adjustment for uh, for a dozen of robots on this factory and probably not on the, not only on this factory probably on the other uh, couple of factories in other regions so that's kind of uh, this DevOps approach for, for the real things, for the hardware uh, world. It's something what uh, I expect will be crucial next five to 10 years. And uh, the last case, just to give you the context, is the space tech. Um, it could be, so last uh, weekend, I think some of you watching this show done by SpaceX, uh, it, it was a really great success uh, for them. And uh, it's opening up uh, the, the idea that okay, satellites could be software defined. Uh, you don't need to, to process uh, all your data on the ground, so you can process uh, a lot of the data, a lot of the things uh, on the orbit. 
and then uh, just to, to grab from, from the orbits uh, insides to the ground and uh, execute. So just push data model to satellites and get the insights back. That's it. So uh, that's the business cases. I think now you're starts getting understanding what it is and how, how to use it in the real world. Uh, now, why it's why it's become why why this paradigm uh, why this uh, clouds getting bigger and bigger and starts touching the real world? Because uh, past 10, 15 years, uh, we have uh, significant growth of two things: Internet of Things. There are more and more uh, smart, uh, smart watches, uh, smart wearables, smart house application, Alexa, whatever. And, uh, and it will be more and more, and soon will be some, I don't know, some smart screwdriver, uh, smart cups, whatever. And this amount of uh, things uh, requires some smart management. And it becomes not really good approach when each and every device directly control it from the, from the cloud. So it's not really a good idea to control each and every action of the device from, from the big public cloud. It's probably better to organize uh, on a, on a lo local level to make some aggregation to make some local decision local al local algorithms etc so it's somehow similar to Agbo, uh, to android or ios uh, where you're getting some smartwatches uh, installing your app on a smartphone and then you're controlling this not from from a smartphone directly but not from the big cloud and a uh, few business figures, uh, it's uh, about, bit of about 5G, and 5G will be a really, really big enabling, uh, enablement for edge computing. And uh, guys from Linux Foundation uh, expecting that it will be uh, six times more bigger industry than uh, traditional cloud economy. So that's a really interesting trend to focus, and uh, if you like it, you can, you can enjoy it. Uh, so now I'm going to share a bit of materials from the Linux Foundation and especially Linux LF Edge. Uh, in order to respect all the copyrights, so all this, I, I, this, this kind of agreed with them um, uh, action. So they have even tuned up a couple of uh, slides uh, for me uh, last couple of days. And I continuously saying that I'm really respecting what Linux Foundation is doing. Uh, telling you why. Linux Foundation is actually not more about Linux, any more about Linux uh, for a long time. So it's already covering wide range of uh, our life domains. So either it's security, a uh, lot of contribution to networking, of course clouds, our lovely Kubernetes, uh, some industry verticals like automotive, like energy, uh, of course edge computing, uh, even some hardware things, uh, standardization organizations starts joining to collaborate. So it's, uh, it's really about a lot of big companies who are contributing there and doing this on a systematical and organized approach. And that's a big power and uh, big thing that a uh, lot of open source projects are really orchestrated carefully in order to maintain interoperability. So uh, let's see how they are defining edge. So for them, uh, they are defining, so there are a number of ways to define it, but uh, okay, what, 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 what I think interesting for me is uh, uh, we are defining from the, from the left to right, so the device edge, so it's everything which is closer to the data, everything which is nearby, so autonomous vehicles, uh, some home, uh, home applications, uh, mobile, whatever. Then uh, over the last mile of communication over mobile networks or, 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 or uh, landline networks, uh, we are coming to infrastructure edge, and uh, telecom edge is, is all about that. So you are, if you're running private, uh, private LTE network or private 5G network, then it's, uh, then it's pure edge case. 
and uh, nearby the mobile network operator core, uh, private, uh, private or public network, you can run your payload. And this will remain uh, uh, edge, uh, edge computing because it's a uh, localized application for some area okay. of, I don't know, uh, 100 square kilometers and so around a number of uh, base stations or inode bees. And this is, this is still edge computing. And also partially edge, how they are calling it, and I'm tending to agree with it, uh, it's regional data centers. It's still uh, supporting the activities related to um, to the operations in edge. So this this is not uh, not the case when you are processing your traffic uh, for the data originated in Ukraine. You are pr uh, managing this data in Frankfurt or, or Paris or Dub Dublin or even in in US. So it's still regional data centers. Uh, it's still like near near your city, same city, same country at least. And uh, this is partially edge uh, edge scenarios. Uh, then, oh, just a second, something goes wrong. Uh, yeah, so uh, now we are coming closer to the technical details. So there are a number of uh, projects uh, within uh, Linux Foundation Edge. Uh, so there are projects uh, on uh, device level. So it's uh, some something related to industry, Fledge. Uh, it could be horizontal projects like Edge Foundry, which is uh, starting from the data over from coming from the sensors up to the central clouds. It could be some special focus projects like Project Eve or Project Home for virtualization for for, for device edge or some Acrino edge stack, which is number of blueprints to, to run entire industry applications. So there are a number of projects what's, uh, which is uh, relevant to use in different scenarios. And so I want to touch a couple of them. Uh, so the, the first one is uh, Edge Virtualization Engine. This is a project uh, inside uh, LF Edge. And this is a project about the um, uh, managing the uh, containers at device edge. So again, remembering small boards, uh, small tiny piece of clouds, uh, what we can organize uh, near to the sensors, near to the controls. Uh, this uh, allows us to run the edge containers uh, following the key paradigm like uh, zero touch provisioning. So it's fully a uh, full automation uh, to make it uh, as much as possible hardware agnostic, network agnostic and uh, to, to operate in zero trust environment. Uh, the one of the specifics of edge computing is that it, this kind of uh, applications install it in, in non-controlled environment. So normally, uh, before we used to, to think that all our servers or all our infrastructure run it in uh, some Secure data centers, secure it logically wise, so with some firewalls, with some uh, isolation, and uh, physical security. I mean, you quite sure that uh, nobody unwanted uh, can came and inject into your server and to steal your data, which is absolutely not the case in, uh, for the edge computing. So uh, that's, uh, that's why, and I will touch a bit later, uh, that uh, we need to always understand that we are running in totally unfriendly environment, zero trust. And uh, the, the way to operate this, uh, so as, as a DevOps, uh, using Cloud API, we can uh, uh, control the EVE controller. Uh, which is uh, located somewhere in uh, it's, it's your application. So you, you can you can run it uh, either on your private cloud, uh, private DC, or whatever in AWS, and uh, then over another API uh, control um, hundreds of devices uh, related to to your industry, related to your domain. So it's distributed across the world. And so that's uh, that. Th this kind of project is helping us. So again, this during this session, I'm not falling into console examples, not 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 running these containers, but but we, we can do this somewhere later. 
and uh, bits uh, looking under the hoods of uh, edge virtualization engine. So here we have uh, a hardware abstraction layer and number of services which is helping us to to maintain this uh, this platform. So it's uh, image downloading service. Uh, um, some uh, configuration management, agent ma management, uh, network security, network overlay with uh, all the access lists uh, and, and other security things, uh, some specific hardware drivers management, all these things. And then below the hardware layer, uh, there is some single purpose sensors or, or whatever you could imagine. Uh, another project, Fledge. So this nice all in helmet, uh, showing us that uh, this is about uh, watching the industry, the, the real hard industry. And uh, this is kind of uh, lightweight uh, project, uh, which is helping us to monitor industry um, industrial protocols. And it's mainly focused on, on, on monitoring of boring hardware things. So for example, uh, just couple of a couple of examples. Uh, Fledge is uh, using uh, private mobile network uh, by Nokia and by number of uh, US uh, US colleagues uh, is monitoring the park of wind turbines. Uh, so the the this so-called predictive uh, maintenance. So uh, based on uh, sensors, analog sensors, they are detecting that okay something going wrong. So this this turbine uh, requires to be managed. So they are detecting and collecting this information, and then uh, taking a decision that okay now we really need to climb this uh, hundred meter tower and opening up uh, and and may, may make some works because otherwise it will be crushed or you need to climb it uh, each and every month, and it's, it's quite expensive. Uh, and even wireless uh, application here is re really useful because to, to cover all this, um, all this park with, uh, with extra wires for each and every sensor to put more, more cables, uh, more routers, uh, all these things, not, sometimes it's, uh, it's quite expensive, especially if we are talking about 100 meters towers. And uh, running local private uh, mobile network for this purpose is, is, is really is really good approach. Another application is uh, to monitor conditions for uh, painting cameras uh, for some aircraft parts. Uh, so it's really sensitive uh, to, to 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 environment during the pro technological process, and this. Uh, this framework helping to to monitor these conditions uh, inside. Again, it's nothing nothing too much complex there. It's it's just a matter of collecting the the, the data from analog sensors and adjusting them and uh, do continuous robust monitoring of the things and generating alerts. But uh, you don't need to invent your own vehicle. You can you you can use some uh, some really proven open source and. Uh, and will be faster in delivery of these kind of solutions. Uh, another, I think, quite easy example is smart home. So all your home sensors can be uh, controlled from the same uh, from the same point, and you can uh, buying some new new home robots. Uh, sometimes you you will not be required to. Uh, to, to make some operation in a big cloud, it could be just sending another, loading another container to your home device, and uh, this home robot will do something useful for you while you are outside. So that's why you are not able to to put it on a mobile application to control it. And uh, important, but uh, project with, uh, with zero line of codes, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is uh, Glossary, uh, because it's a very emerging technology. So it's like two years ago, it was almost nothing, nothing about edge computing. Now it's booming. And uh, sometimes you need simply a vocabulary or glossary to, to understand and to be sure that we are talking about exactly the same language. So this, this kind of uh, funny but, but really useful project. And all these projects and uh, even more projects, because I've touched just a couple of them, are managed by traditional Linux Foundation approach governance. 
with a uh, number of uh, steering committees per technical steering committees per uh, projects and uh, with of course uh, active participation of developers community uh, then technical advisory council so this kind of generic technical advisory which is not not part of technical steering committee because technical steering committee is really discussing features bugs prioritization all the things and actually you can join it uh, any one of uh, i mean so everyone can join this uh, these technical steering committees at least to listen and then to start participating so it's it's totally open and uh, if for example some project you need to tune up something for instance in kubernetes in order to get uh, to get better better integration uh, then you can escalate it to through the outreach team to to the other teams to the other communities to other technical steering committee and uh, express your your need and saying that okay guys uh, for instance kubernetes is a significant part of, of this project so let's let's enhance it in order to enable some of our features so uh, that's kind of orchestration, uh, which is uh, which makes incredible and huge value uh, created by Linux Foundation. That all these open source movements are really, really coordinated, and this is uh, all the guys in this technical steering committee and developers community. They are uh, employees of participants of the Linux Foundation. So all these companies, uh, premier members, so these guys, are, these companies are uh, listing quite a big checks uh, in, in participation and listing even much, much more in terms of their people contribution to, the, to, to all these things. And uh, you can see here the most top tier technical companies. So there are all of chip makers like ARM, Intel, Qualcomm. There are IBM, uh, Huawei, HP, Nokia. So most of big guys are there and they are coordinating their activities. So, and that's the reason if you want to, to, to use some framework, better to take this framework out of Linux Foundation uh, governance. To, to, to take it from there but and not to try and to invent own vehicle because then there is a high probability that uh, this project will support the the hardware of what what you will choose so if you are choosing something to be uh, to, to be run over arm cores uh, preferably to to take it from linux foundation because then it's uh, high probability that all the features are going to be supported so uh, so key takeaways, uh, it's a great organization, uh, they are, uh, their biggest role in moderating the, uh, the things and, um, and now uh, you need to just to take a look closer on the, on the things uh, because they are right now actively involving standards uh, and then will be, then will be kind of useful for you, definitely. So, back into our reality. So, again, thanks to Linux Foundation for provided materials, and uh, now we are going to, to say about the uh, DevOps specifics. Uh, as this is a DevOps conference, uh, I'd like to, to share more. Uh, so, resource management. Pay attention, once you start, start touching these things, take careful attention on the resource management, even on the planning level, even on the when you're just starting your project and uh, thinking about that, okay, probably I want to use edge computing approach, I, I need to, do, to, to buy, out, buy some hardware for this. Uh, start calculating your resources, because uh, it's not like in AWS where you can scale ultimately, no. Uh, you're scaling just within this perimeter. Or you need to, uh, to buy another board. And then another thing, uh, most of use cases assuming ability to, to play autonomous, fully autonomous. Uh, and uh, this means uh, that uh, we need to be able to run uh, without internet connectivity, without any kind of connectivity. And yeah, that's uh, that's the way uh, how how you need to think about these systems. Uh, so few practical challenges regarding the ag tech industry. So it's agriculture. 
it's structure automation and all the things. And now I'm falling to to some details related to the uh, to the practical implementation. So uh, once we decided uh, to to start this project uh, with structure automation, uh, we think about uh, should we go edge computing really, or we sh we can go just r just only embedded embedded programming controllers, all these things. So why we need cloud inside the structure and. Uh, the reason why uh, we decided to go edge computing uh, it's because it's not it's not embedded versus cloud it's embedded and cloud and for embedded we we still uh, we, 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 uh, we still developing a uh, number of things which is uh, related to some single purpose devices so if it's a single purpose uh, application uh, then you probably need just to just to use uh, embedded approach and that's it. But uh, for example, Tractor in a modern modern world is uh, quite heavily digitalized entity. So uh, you have number of really uh, number of screens. So you, the, the the picture what you can see on the screen is is is, is somehow reflecting the reality. So Tractor is usually uh, using some autopilot or, or uh, driving assistance systems. You are uh, keep tracking on number of screens, monitoring the what's going on, some sensors, some uh, seeding machines, spraying machine status. Uh, so it's, it's really like a cockpit. And uh, more and more application coming. So one day you you would you want to to add there some uh, more applications, uh, extra applications. Uh, you don't need to to mount extra screen. You don't need to mount extra um, uh, extra. Uh, extra computing devices so you can do some execution part or some sensors and then bring your container into the local cloud and then operate this way it will be much cheaper much uh, faster in adoption uh, much easier to maintain uh, so uh, another benefit is that you are able to utilize uh, CI/CD approach, uh, QA automation. So you can, uh, thanks to containers, uh, you can uh, speed up the delivery process and unify the testing approach. Uh, scalability, as I said, uh, also by this approach you are uh, quitting a bit the chip dependency because if you are doing this in embedded way you are quite highly dependent on the exact chip you are using, exact periphery of the, of the, of the silicon. Uh, or system on chip, uh, while using edge virtualization, you are much less dependent on on on, on such things uh, at the areas where you don't need this, and uh, you are easily able to bring third-party applications. And again, think about this as uh, as a uh, Android or iOS uh, phone versus uh, legacy firmware phone from 20 years old, uh, ahead b b before. Sorry. Uh, another practical thing, solution development process. Uh, you need to know IoT world. You need to know bit a bit of bit of embedded. You need to know the domain exact domain specific. So, uh, for instance, for agriculture, there are a lot of things uh, around GPS. GPS is not precise at all. Uh, it's uh, the precision of GPS. I would say con you need to consider that it's randomly. Uh, you don't know when your GPS becomes uh, plus minus 100 meters and now it's plus minus 2 meters and it's meters. Uh, in agriculture, the modern trend, you need to have centimeters level. Uh, for this, you need uh, there are technologies, so some real-time kinematics you can do. You can easily have uh, without be some military guy. Uh, you can you can uh, easily have precise GPS with centimeters grade. Uh, but uh, for this, you need uh, stable uh, internet connectivity or private cloud connectivity because there are some special technology in order to uh, adjust your uh, your location and uh, give you some corrections uh, over the over the internet. So you want to have precise GPS? It's possible, but. You need to remember the unit, unit connectivity in this case. Uh, sensors. Never trust sensors data until it's calibrated. 
you always need to think about uh, what will happen with this sensor after week, month, year of work. It could be some chemical damage over the sensors, it could be some uh, mechanical damage, etc. So always think about your state of your sensors. And this is kind of a thing what you, what you should never, never, never trust by default. Environmental conditions. Again, uh, on one hand you are just, for instance, DevOps guy or product manager. But it's on the background, you should understand that uh, some of issues to your system could come uh, from the from the direction of what, what from what you are not expecting at all. So uh, some cables can be corrupted by uh, ultraviolet or by vibrations or chemicals or some thermal management. So when you are designing the the hardware. Uh, for for your private cloud inside the tractor, you need to think about the load over the CPUs, and understand the the, the radiation size, or, uh, radiator size, what you need to to do for thermal management, and uh, application which is uh, working pretty fine with one or two containers, can uh, blow up your uh, your 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 board, your servers uh, once you have. Uh, load to 100% percent all, uh, all of your cores. So you need to take care about this as well. Uh, so another practical uh, thing is QA process. It's a fun. It's, it's sometimes it's really a fun and that's, that's, that's why I, I, I like this. Uh, so I just quick, uh, quick video, like, like that's how usually QA process in office uh, going on and sometimes reality in love. So here we need to calibrate pressure sensor and we are trying to make up to 15 bar pressure on the on the magistral and on 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 on, uh, on the tubes and there was a risk of of blowing up the thing. Sometimes happened. Uh, another, uh, it's again, it's quite close to embedded world. You sometimes need to somebody in somebody in a team uh, who can uh, make uh, PCBs, who can do a soldering, who know what is uh, oscilloscope uh, and all these things. So it's really, really close to embedded world, uh, but it's not flying without DevOps practices. Uh, regarding your applications, uh, so you have done nice and working applications, you have tested it, everything fine. But uh, during the field operations, uh, it could be the case when it's uh, operated by really, really low qualified uh, people. Sorry, but this is a real world. And uh, be ready that uh, if something could be screwed up, it will be definitely screwed up one day. If something not designed in a way that it's just plug and play, uh, better to disable it or redesign. If uh, you are allowing user to, to do some uh, unnecessary configuration in menu or whatever, uh, either it's uh, either this interface from the logic point of view foolproof or or disable it. Uh, sometimes it's operating in the middle of nowhere. So this nice curiosity robots kind of example. Consider that uh, your application can be work absolutely autonomously uh, in a region where it's. Uh, Eight hours driving, and your customer is running application, and uh, something goes wrong, and you need to to understand how you will support your customer in this case because uh, it could be a really really tough journey to physically to join him and to understand what's going on. Um, connectivity. Uh, you are lucky you get connectivity, 10 kilobits per second. That's a reality, sometimes or it's unstable. So do not expect, uh, unless you are working with, 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 with real data centers, but with a device edge, don't really expect that you will be able to continuously get all the wide range of telemetry, stable console access, all these things. 
just don't expect it. If you got stable 3G uh, on, uh, on on some uh, mechanical base, uh, I mean some tractor park, it's okay, you're lucky, it's, it's saving a bit of your nerves. But uh, be ready that there will be GPRS connectivity or LoRaWAN connectivity and will be a bit of pain to, to, to interact. Again, foolproof design. Uh, connectors. If you are designing connectors that it, that it could be mis misconnected, so we are using two, uh, two kind of uh, con uh, two, uh, same kind of connectors, uh, and uh, one with power, another one with digital, and uh, mechanically it's possible to to misplace them. It will be misplaced one day for sure. So pay attention on these kind of devi uh, design devices. Uh, mobile network. Uh, one tiny aspect. Uh, you are imagine you are using mobile network. Who is taking care about the balances? Who is taking care about the SIM card management? Uh, who, who is responsible for this? So you should you should think on the background and probably uh, make it uh, to inventory uh, the uh, as a. In as kind of periphery inventory, also the balance uh, on a mobile account. And uh, last things, upcoming challenges. Uh, execute connectivity as a service, so we want to, to make some uh, eSIM solution, which is quite soon will be available for us. Uh, we want to implement more security, and if you are also considering some security applications, uh, take a look on Keylime. So Secure Boot, uh, this is definitely a good project for Secure Boot and using of TPM. We can discuss it on uh, during the Q&A sessions if you like. And uh, computer vision over the rows, uh, data set collection, also good, uh, good point for edge computing. Uh, so these kind of things, again, it will be this over the mostly the same hardware or the mostly the same thing. You can uh, we can unite uh, a lot of different applications into into one box, and that's that will be the case in the future. So uh, I think generally uh, that there will be a great future of these kind of applications. If you enjoyed uh, the presentation, feel free to ask uh, more questions. Uh, welcome to Zoom Room after. And uh, if you really enjoy it, connect me in LinkedIn. So soon I will announce uh, Edge Computing Meetup. Uh, it will be first Ukrainian edge computing meetup. I still not decide so whether to, to make it uh, virtual or uh, physical one. I would be happy to, to make it physically, but we'll see, depends on, 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 on COVID. So thanks for your watching. S quick special thanks to all the, all the team on Edge Cloud Tech, to especially the Linux Foundation, LF Edge, and Toronto Space Studio for the design of this presentation. And of course for the, webs, the, the DevOps Fest team who is organizing this kind of nice event. Uh, Pavlo, thank you so much for your presentation. I realize that it's, it's a new challenge for all of us who are trying to support community in uh, such conditions. So uh, was it difficult for you to have your presentation in uh, such studio format? So, so what is your feeling? Uh, no, of course, presenting from the, from the real scene and, uh, and, 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 and watching the real people with, with, with eyes, is, it's it's, it's much better, but in current conditions, uh, I think this is the best possible way to to execute this kind of thing. So I could make it so in, in a t-shirt from my home, uh, <laughs> etc. But it will be kind of less serious experience. So here, kind of camera infrastructure, it's, it's really great. So yeah. I, I think the, the, the best what ca what can be done in these kind of conditions. Oh. Thank you, and thank you for coming, uh, even despite of sunny weather outside, <laughs> because we're still in dark room. <laughs> okay, it was you know? a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, friends, um, looking forward uh, to see you in the uh, Zoom room, and uh, soon it will be um, the final words from our organizers uh, um, and uh, some prizes. We'll see who are the winners. So thank you for being with us for whole uh, the presentations today.
and uh, see you next time. Bye. Thank you. Bye.